What's going on, brothers? Welcome back to another episode of the O'Shea Blogcast. I got my man. This boy is the, the, the dark game master right here. Bro, we, we coming back. I'm telling you, dark niggas, we coming back in style. You like this dude. You know, y'all like skin niggas. Y'all better watch out. We're going to be president in a minute. I'm telling you. Uh, here I have Mr. Mr. Lucario fan. Uh, he's coming back for the second straight week in a row. The brother's on the move, man. He has great content. He's coming back out here to hang out with me one more time. Take your time out of his busy schedule, man. I'm a really, 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 really big fan of your channel. What's going on, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me back again. I appreciate it, man. Real talk. Real talk, man. I had a good time last time. What's up with you? What's going on with you? Man, I'm shit. About to commit uh, medical school suicide, but we're gonna we gonna make it through that, man. It's all good, you know. Ain't nothing that they can't handle. But um, how? I mean, did, did you get a lot of subscribers from the last time you came? Yeah, yeah, man. The, the subscribers is going up, man. I'm I'm, I'm at eight thousand. I'm trying to get to that ten thousand mark, and then that fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, a million. You know what I mean? We got we got to keep it going. <laughs> gotta keep it going, gotta, yeah, man. <laughs> okay, let me ask. Let me ask you this real quick because you just did a video um, yesterday. Why women use you? Right. What was that all about? Yeah. So basically, I was all about how of a lot of guys women to take advantage of a lot of guys is because women they know that really hung up on getting sex. Like, so they know that there's a good section of guys that will basically do anything and everything just to get sex so then they say okay well if i know this guy's gonna give me money or give me a lot of attention take me out do all this other stuff then i'm gonna use that i'm gonna use him for everything he got you understand what i'm saying and then i'll promise or i'll make it seem as if i'm gonna give him some and sometimes some of these women don't even have sex with these guys sometimes there, there's women out there and i know women personally who do this where i knew this girl she was messing with this dude for like two years he was buying her gifts you know paying her rent doing all this other stuff and she only gave him like a kiss once. And that was basically it. You understand? And he's like still trying to get at it. And so a lot of women will take advantage of these guys because they don't understand the game. And then they're just, you know, they're just getting played. So, and, and if you don't understand the game and you're so bent up on trying to get sex, then it's going to be easy for you to get taken advantage of. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's what really goes down, you know. <laughs> it's, it's sad. It's sad, like crazy, you know. I, I um you, you bring up a good point because I, I believe uh, you also and Alan Roger Curry talks about the possibility of sex. Right, right, right. So let, let let's talk about that a little bit more more clear. Um, why don't women, in your opinion, just come out and say, "Look, I'm not interested in your ugly ass. Your lips <laughs> is multicolored. You got a receding hairline. You got on that goddamn red shirt on, two tone red color shirt. You like a Fubu Platinum character." Why can't women just come out and say, oh, say, I ain't fucking with you, your breath stink? Right, yeah. right. Right, well, one, one reason is that women don't ever like to feel as if they're doing something, like, kind of, you know, shady or goofy. You understand? Like, they wanted, to, they wanted to seem like, oh, no, you know, I'm really interested in this guy. I'm just trying to get to know him. This is why women will say stuff like, hey, I want to get to know you. I want to take it slow because... It's easier to say that because it makes her look a little bit more honorable to say that versus to say, hey, listen, I'm not really into you. I'm just, you know, I just want you for your money. I just want you for your, your time and your, your energy and your attention. So it's, it's going to make them look, uh, you know, basically bad to just come out and say that. So they will never really say that. So this is why I always tell guys, you got to look at a woman's actions. Like her words, it don't mean shit. You understand what I'm saying? Like you have to look at what she is doing because a woman will say this or she'll pretend that she's into you or she can, you know, uh, uh, you know, act like she basically wants this or that. But the reason why she's doing that is because she needs to get what she wants. So she needs to get the benefits from you. So she's not going to just blatantly say it because if she did, most guys aren't going to go for that. They're going to be like, what the hell is going on with you? So they have to put up this illusion that hey this is how i am i'm just this nice good girl and i really want to take it slow you know i I'm, I'm my last boyfriend he played me and i, I feel hurt and i don't want to get hurt again all of this stuff is bullshit. you understand what i'm saying and even a lot of times when women are feeling this way even if they were hurt or even if they felt like you know they they uh were hurt in the last relationship that still doesn't have anything to do with you they're just using that as an excuse or rationalization 
for using you. You feel what I'm saying? So this is why I tell guys, you got to be hip to the game and not feel like, um, you know, oh, there's this one type of girl who's going to be this way and the other type of girl who's going to not be this way. Guys have this thought process of thinking there's the good girl and the bad girl. So they're like, oh, the good girls are going to do this and the bad girls are going to do that. Nah, the good girl and the bad girl is the same exact woman. She just presents herself a specific way to each individual guy. So the way she might present herself to me is different than how she's going to present herself to you, but it's the same exact woman. So you can't get caught up in that. And then she will see if she can run a game on you or play you based off of your responses off of what she says. You see what I mean? So you got to make sure that you're not falling for the, the okie doke. You feel what I mean? It's what crazy. kind of um, what kind of a uh, um, games can she run on you or okie dokes? In your opinion, do you think that you know women can do to um, to men to get right. resources from? Them? Right, and this is the thing. Well, a, a lot of it has to do, like we were saying, with the 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 you know the promise of sex. Basically, is that women women know that a lot of men fall for the whole women. Uh, need to get you know get to know you first before they have sex with you, or women need to warm up to sex, or or they need to take their time to really. It's let me tell you something. Women understand what I'm saying. Women love that shit. The thing is, whether or not she's going to have sex with you, usually within the first couple of minutes that she's you know talking to you. Now, if you start saying something dumb or you start doing some dumb shit, then that can make her not want to have sex with you at that point but when she first meets you you, you know the vibe that she gets from you you know determines if she wants to do it or not so her mind is already basically made up you understand so it all depends on the circumstances and how you orchestrate the situation to get the sex so the okie doke and the stuff that they run on you that little game they run on you is to is your you know you being naive to this to this fact you being naive and not understanding that women actually like sex so then if they know that you think that women have to go through this step by step process to get to sex they're like oh i can just use that for my you know to my advantage and this guy that i don't really like i don't even ever have to have sex with him i could just keep saying yo you know i want to take it slow i want to get to know you more and as that taking it slow happens that's when she's getting all the dates that's when she's getting all the tension that's when you know she's you know getting all this stuff from you and by the time you're like, hey, you know, what's up? Like, what, what's, what's good with the sex? And then she's like, oh, I'm not interested. I just don't feel it anymore. Or she stops calling you. She ghosts you. And then you wonder what the hell happened. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to make sure that you're, you, you're on top of that so you know that, you know, you don't get caught up in that nonsense. You see what I mean? And it all starts from you understanding the game. You see? It's, it's crazy out here, man. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me ask you. So um, woman tells me... Um, l let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this, right? So I, um, I approach a woman, okay? Um, she allows me to take her on a date. It's not even like, let's say it's an expensive restaurant. Let's say it's something like Scissors, right? right. Um, okay. And then uh, she's responding, uh, you know, a little bit to my, you know, my phone call. She calls me. Um, we go out for... Um, coffee or something, nothing really expensive. Okay, um, I think a lot of a lot of dates these days, especially with black men, they kind of work like this because a lot of brothers don't have a whole lot of money, and, and brothers are kind of cheap in, in anyway. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you know how that should be. So I'm trying to just kind of give it, you know, a, a real life scenario. So, mm -hmm. um, third time, you know, you might uh, go to the movies. Okay, so you got you know three different dates, you know, Sizzler coffee movies right. you know you know budget friendly mm -hmm. and then you're like all right go back to my house and she like okay i'm just trying to take it slow now at this point she ain't never asked you for anything right um but but how do you know if she's like a, a time waster or if she's gonna try to hit me up for you know 50 dollars for the phone bill later on like how do we how do we gauge somebody like that right that situation right well the thing is every date that you go on well first of all if you're going on three dates at least by the third date, that's that's basically sex time. So if a girl is going to talk about, let, you know, like taking a slow getting to know you stuff, okay, cool. We got at least to the third date to make something happen. Now, within each of those dates, even on the first date, you know, you go to scissors or whatever. As you're on the date, there, o there should always be you uh, flirting and trying to create sexual tension because you have to put that sexual tension out there because you need to see how receptive she is to you sexually. So if you're interacting with a girl 
when she's not receptive to you sexually, that's a red flag. So that either means that she's not really that into you or she might have issues with intimacy. Either way, it's not really good for you. You understand what I'm saying? So if she's being receptive to you, you know, meaning like she doesn't necessarily have to have sex with you on the first date, but if you um, try to touch her hand and she's moving it away, or if you're trying to like get in closer with her and she's moving away, or you try to kiss her and she moves her head away, that's not a good sign. That's basically a, a, you know, a, a sign that she could be basically using you for your attention and all that, and she's not really that into you. Right. So if you notice that on the first date, you know, at the scissor or whatever, then at that point, you should basically kick that girl to the curb if she's doing all that type of stuff. If she's saying, hey, you know, I feel like I need to get to know you more. I really like you and all that other stuff. Now you have a choice to make. You can say, all right, cool. Let me either kick it to the curb or I could go on the second date and see what it really is about. Then if you go on the second date, then you got to still do the same thing. Try to actually, you know, create that sexual uh, tension and then see how she's responding to that. Now, a woman who is really into you in a lot of cases, she's going to respond to the, 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 you know, the flirting and the sexual tension off the bat, meaning on the first date, she will actually kiss you. You understand what I'm saying? Then she will actually reciprocate that into it. So if you see her do that, Right. Then you go on the second date and she's also doing that. And then by the third date, it should be time where y'all can make it actually make it happen. You understand? And now there are exceptions to the rule where there are some girls who, you know, if they're religious or, you know, they, you know, just some other thing that could happen. But in most cases, if a woman is really into you, she's going to be, you know, being receptive to your uh, building that sexual tension. So it's really up to you to be able to build that sexual tension so you can see how she's going to react to you. A lot of guys are going to date and they're very neutral. They don't really, you know, flirt too much. They're just sort of they're, they're way too laid back. So you can't really tell if she's into you or not. You can't really tell if she's uh, going to be sexual with you because you have to start that interaction or put yourself out there in a way where she can basically, you know, um, basically come back at you and, and, and show you what she's about and how she's feeling about you. So it's really up to you to basically test her to see if she's going to be receptive. Because if you don't test her, you're not going to know. And then you're going to probably be wasting your time with a girl who's not really into you. So it's really just, you know, her giving you an indication of how into you she is by you doing what you're supposed to do by building that, you know, sexual tension. So that's really the, the thing you really need to do. And that's really important on dates that I tell guys, like, you always have to be on top of that situation when you're interacting with a girl. You know what I'm saying? Even sometimes before you uh, try to get a date with a girl, like let's say you meet a girl at a bar, you know, at a party or whatever, sometimes you even at that point want to see sort of how interested she is by, you know, taking it there in that situation of being a little bit more uh, sexual with her in that moment. Because then if you see that she's showing that interest, then you'd be like, all right, cool, you know, let's get together next week and let's do this and let's do that. And then you start it from that point. You feel what I mean? So yeah, it's all about creating that that interest and seeing and how she's responding to it. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me talk to about this because a lot of times that you know a lot of men think that women are using you for money. Mm -hmm. That's what we think. When we think about you know, I ain't giving the bitch no money. I ain't giving the bitch no money. Fuck that. Well, the women are smart, right? Because the different category for men. Like I, I I did this one back in the day. I did a video. Got almost five hundred thousand views. I was talking about how, how women use men. One dude is for money. Mm. Another nigga is to be, I was, I know I was that nigga. I was the Uber driver before Uber came out. I was taking bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking bitches to their to the other boyfriend's house. Bitch was telling me, take me to my cousin's house. And yeah. then come to the door. It was another nigga that she was fucking with. Right, and I was right. All right. Okay, so you have that nigga. Then you have the nigga who she just talked to on the phone and spend time with. A lot mm -hmm. of dudes don't know that women will use you like that and never ask you for a fucking dime. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. a lot of these guys are like, especially if you're like a dude that's, you're a funny guy. Like me, I, I consider myself to be a funny dude, right? Mm -hmm. Women like to laugh. So you thinking you cracking jokes for this hoe. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you telling you, Richard Pryor and shit, motherfucking full stand up every fucking time he talks to her, she laughed. For you, well, two or three hours, hang up, hang up with you, and go right. fucking who can't tell no jokes. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but, I mean, your case, like, how else do women use men, I mean, other ways besides just, okay, the money aspect? Um, I mean, what other things have you seen women use men for outside of money? Right. Well, a, a lot of times, you know, 
women, like you were saying, women who use guys to to for an emotional tampon, like they'll you know pour their emotions out to you. This is the type of ladies who are gonna talk on the phone with you all day, telling telling you their problems with other guys. So you're in the friend zone, and they're using you to basically you know as a you're like a, a you're like her male girlfriend. You understand what I'm saying? So she's using you that way. Um, women will also use you, you know, of course, like you're saying with money, but also just specifically for, for dates. Like they'll, you know, they even had a story on, I think it was like, um, Dateline or something where this woman was basically using guys just to have dinner. You understand? So she didn't pay for dinners for like months. So women will use, you know, guys for that. Um, women will also use you to make other guys jealous. So a woman might invite you to a party literally specifically so that you can come there hang out with her and then make the guy that's at the party that she knows is going to be there jealous so she's not really even into you she's just using you to get the other guy upset you understand what i'm saying also sometimes women will go on dates with you and use you as entertainment i, I made a video about this called the entertainment date that's when a woman is she might be um involved with another guy it's not really her boyfriend but it's a guy she might want to be you know want to have as a boyfriend and they're seeing each other or whatever um, but things aren't going too well and she's just using you as a, you know, entertainment for her on this date so that she can take her mind off of that guy. Or let's say she might have just broken up with her, her uh, boyfriend and she still has those feelings for him. Well, she's going to go on a date with you just so that she can uh, get a self-esteem boost so that she has a guy there interacting with her. And she, you know, she might not even really like you. She, her, her mind and her, her, you know, her feelings are still caught up in her ex-boyfriend but she's just using you as a distraction so that she can sort of like you know like uh get over that the, the boyfriend the ex-boyfriend so you know there's a lot of times that women will use guys for a lot of different things but the, the one main thing that women will use guys for is attention and guys don't understand how important um attention is to women because attention basically what you're you're, you're giving a woman is you're basically giving her you know, uh, like your you, your 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 um your intelligence, your your wittiness, your 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 thought process, your you know your knowledge. You're giving her all these things, and she's taking all that in. It's not just like you being there, and she's like you know, oh, this guy's here. No, she's everything that you come with, and everything that your value is being given to her. But she's not giving you anything back. You understand? She's just taking, 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 and she's just using you for that. And then the thing is, is that. You're there because you're like, hey, you know, you're a woman. I'm interested in you, and I'm also interested in you sexually. I'm I'm sexually attracted to you, so I want to have sex. But she's like, no, we're not gonna have sex. You're just gonna be here, and I'm going to promise you or make it seem like I'm gonna have sex with you. But I'm just using you and taking you for everything you have as far as you know your your presence. I'm gonna just use it, and that's it. You understand? And and women love that attention because it's validation for them. It's it makes them feel good. Women will take you know um, how how much attention they have as their, you know, their worth. This is why you have a lot of Instagram models and, you know, they, they all about the likes and the, you know, Facebook likes and all that other stuff. Like all that stuff is like a high for them. It makes them feel good. This is why a lot of women will go on Tinder and, you know, OkCupid or Plenty Official, or any of these websites, these online dating sites, and they're strictly there just to get messages. So if they're having a bad day, they'll go through their messages, see how many guys are messaging them. They have no intention to go meet the guy, but they're just using all these guys for the attention. You know, they'll chat with these guys, they'll say all this stuff, but they're not really trying to make any moves. So a lot of women will, will just, you know, use guys sort of as props. You understand what I'm saying? And without having to give anything in return. So, you know, that, that happens like crazy. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so um, let me just take a little bit of intermission. I'm going to ask some more questions. We have a wonderful interview. Um, now, uh, to all the other uh, uh, YouTubers out there, I know um, I, I'm kind of backed up on the Hangout. I know I was supposed to do a Hangout with um, uh, MGTOW 101 from Australia tomorrow. Um, me and Steve Dean Williams are supposed to be on tomorrow. Uh, Brotherhood Lessons, Manhood Lessons. So I'm, I'm going to get to everybody. Uh, you know, what, what ended up happening is this week I'm really, 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 really got a compressed schedule. Um, this probably might be the only hangout I can do today, all right, because um, a lot of people want to get in over here with me with the hangouts. Um, I actually missed my Chris Jones hangout last night, Pump Chasers. So um, so you guys bear with me uh, mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with the stuff, man. I, I know, uh, you know, we, we, I'm posing network with a lot of y'all. I'm going to get you guys in, and we're going to, you know, uh, uh, create these classic hangouts, okay? So let's do this. So for all the YouTubers out there, 
um, you know, I'm going to still uh, uh, meet those, uh, those, those hangouts eventually, okay? Um, have an exam on, uh, on, uh, on, on Monday. So I'm just going to do this quick hangout today, and then as time permits, um, you know, I'll be able to knock more out for you guys. So let's do this. Let's like the video. I got 89 people watching, okay? Um, first thing I need you to do is go ahead and like the video. All right, let's get to 50 likes. All right, so like I said, I know I'm backed up with the interviews, y'all. But like I said, you guys, uh, you know, bear with me just for this week, okay? And we'll get we'll get everything uh, back to to normal. So let's get the likes up, you guys. And also, uh, we want to honor our guest that's come on, man, Lacario fans. The second week in the row, the brother is always very busy, has his own business, he's doing his own thing in New York City, okay? But he stopped by just to to come and collaborate real quick. Um, for you brothers who haven't subscribed to him. Let's go in the chat and let's click on Lucario's fan, um, you know, YouTube subscription. Go subscribe to him. Go support that channel, okay? Because you're gonna get a lot of good information over there. All right, what up, all man? I appreciate that shit for real, real talk. Yeah, no problem, man. It's like I said, it's everybody go down to the actual um, comment section here. I just, what's up, man? Thank you for the fifteen dollars, man. I appreciate you, player. I, I'm broke, nigga. I'm broke. Y'all can drop some money in the in, in the pot too, man. If y'all want to help my hairline grow back, all right. So if you want to, you know, help my hairline grow back, you know, uh, drop some kind of rappers off in the super chat. Uh, uh, drop some chicken, some dollars. However y'all want to do it. Appreciate you, player. And so we're gonna get back to the interview once again. If you want to also get his information, go to the description link. You can also see Mr. Lucario um, there. So let me let me ask you this because you, you were talking about um, women will use men um, for attention. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how if a woman is you know feeling with another dude, right? Um, she can still go on a date with you mm -hmm. and still be feeling somebody else. Right. Well, I'm gonna tell you like this. I, I mean, let's see if you agree with me. I had a female that was in love with another dude. Or so she said, and I was fucking her like almost every day. And she can still use you that way, even if she's fucking you. Like a lot of guys don't understand that. Like, you could be getting you could be getting used. What up, Jason? Thank you for the super chat. You niggas can be used even if you're getting the pussy. Like, right, right. Let's talk about right. that. Real talk. And that and, 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 if, and if you're gonna be used, that's I would say that's the best way to be you. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> like years ago and it was titled be the guy she's fucking because i was saying that women they put us in categories just like how we put them in categories like you know we, we say okay she's wifey she's a jump off she's you know side chick women will say okay that's the guy that paid my bills that's the guy that you know um gives me attention this is the guy that i'm fucking you understand so be the guy that she's having sex with and sometimes you know women they'll do stuff like they, they call it like revenge sex you understand where they'll be mad at the guy that they're dealing with and so they'll end up having sex with you and they're using you for sex just to get back at the guy. So that's like their, you know, rationale for it. But the thing is, women, they will also, you know, try to use you for that. And the thing is, is that if you're going to get used for anything, I always say that's the best thing to do. And the thing is, I tell guys, you have to make sure that um, whenever you're interacting with women, you have to be that guy that she sees as the guy she wants to fuck or what, what i would say is that you're the you're the your only purpose to her to create that is that when you're dealing with her you have to let her know that basically that's your only purpose so for example you might be talking to a girl and you let her know like listen you know i'm just trying to hook up that's all i'm trying to do and she's like oh but i'm you know i don't know about this i don't know about that and you'd be like you know what listen here's my number Holler at me when you're ready to get down. You understand? And I've done this like plenty of times. And so sometimes a girl might call you in a week. She might call you in a month. It might it'd be out of the blue somewhere three months down the line. But when she's ready to have sex and she's in that mood, she's going to call you versus, you know, these other guys out here that's just trying to, you know, holler at her and do all this, do all this other stuff because she knows that that's the only thing that she can get from you she's not going to get anything else she's not going to get that attention you know from you calling her all the time she's not going to get you paying her bills nothing you've designated yourself as that guy you understand and so you have to stay firm on that so you can't say okay you know just call me when you want to hook up and then all of a sudden she called you to talk and then you end up talking to her or she's calling you because she want to go out on a date and you go out on a date with her now nah, you have to be like 
I am only for, for, for to provide you dick. You understand what I'm saying? And is when you want that, that's when you call me. So then you can set up your situations with a lot of different girls just by being that type of guy. Like I always say it like this. It's like if you go to um, a store that only sells like one thing, you understand? You're that store that sells that one thing, that one product. So if you want that one thing, you understand you're going to that store. You like that pizza store. I, we just sell pizza. We don't sell, you know, hamburger or seafood, nothing. We just sell pizza. So if you want pizza, you fuck with me. You understand what I'm saying? And that's it. Don't be the fucking variety store like Walmart where you sell everything. You understand? Because you might be wanting to, you know, uh, she wants to get pizza, but then she's distracted by all this other stuff because you're not being that one thing to her. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to present yourself as that one thing. You see what I mean? Even at the time where she might not be ready for it, you just let her know that that's what you're about. So when she is ready for it, she could come back and holler at you versus you getting used for all these other things. You understand? So if you're going to get used, or you want, you know, she's going to use you, let her use you for the sex. You understand? Because that's the thing that you're trying to get. That's the thing that you want. So then you make that happen with the girl. You understand? <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, in, in your opinion, because a lot of guys, I mean, I, I'm starting to think that a lot of guys are getting used mm. because they don't let their real intentions know up front. Now, right. I think you're getting it that a lot of guys are afraid of, um, you know, but we, we, we've kind of been taught, like, you know, when dealing with women, we need to be a certain type of way. Um, we're not supposed to say what we really want because we don't want to offend women. We're supposed to play the role. Right, right. Um, it's, what should men tell women that they really want to fuck or they want to screw or they want to have sexual companionship? What should they say in your, in your opinion? What's yeah. the approach and everything? Yeah, I think, I think that that needs to be the conversation that's had when a guy first talks to women. So let's say you see a girl at a party, you're talking to her, um, you know, y'all flirting a little bit, and by the time you're going to either leave or let's say she's about to leave and you say, hey, miss, listen, um, you know, take my number down and, you know, we should get together and hook up. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to let you know I'm real busy. I'm not really trying to date. I'm not really trying to do any of that other stuff, but I'm really attracted to you. So we need to get together and hook up and have some fun. Right. So if you let a woman know this. Right. And she's feeling you. A lot of times she's going to do it because most most of the times they want to do it, but they don't want to be the ones to bring it up. They don't want to be the ones to tell you, hey, I want to you know, have sex with you. They want you to, to, to do it so that they don't have to be responsible for the sex now. Also, um, what you got to understand, too, is that sometimes if you go the route of trying to be this guy, let's say you want to, you just want to hook up, but you're saying, well, let me go on a few dates or let me try to, like, you know, uh, pretend I want to take it slow so that she'll get comfortable enough with me and I want to do stuff with me. What happens is that if you're going down that route, what you're telling her um, basically is that you're the type of guy who she could see as boyfriend material. So even if a woman wants to have sex with you, she might not. Because she thinks, oh, if I have sex with him now, then he's not going to see me as wifey material, so I'm going to make him wait because he seems like the type of guy that might want to be my boyfriend. So if you're putting yourself out there as that guy, then she might treat you as that guy, and then it's going to take you longer to make it happen, and it's going to stall, and it's, you know, it's probably not going to happen if things don't go how it's supposed to go. And then she's going to see you as that boyfriend guy and take it more seriously than it needs to be. So again, this is what I was saying earlier. If you be that guy, she's just fucking and saying, okay, this is all I want. She understands that's what it is, and she designates you as that guy. So if she is horny, if she wants to make it happen, that's what she's going to do. She's not going to go that you know that extra mile to do the do all that other extra crazy shit. You feel what I mean? <laughs> so it's all about how you approach it, you know. Good point. Good point. And I, I, let me kind of go back to that point. And before I do that, Eric Berg, shout out for the two dollar uh, super chat, man. You guys know before before I uh, go back to this point. I really appreciate all my subscribers, man. Seriously. Um, you know, usually I want to give you guys a show because I've been kind of busy. I haven't put a lot of content as of late. But um, man, I got the best subscribers in the entire world. And you, you guys uh, are, are really, 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 really dear to me. Uh, so thank you for supporting me, supporting Lucario. Um, and, and we're just really trying to make the best, the best shows for you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you, Willie Barnhill. All you brothers, man, we appreciate what you guys do for us. I know a lot of times as YouTubers, we don't really look back at uh, at our fan base. Um, but I, I, seriously, you guys are the reason why we're able to do what we're doing today. So I um, appreciate you. And Lucario, I appreciate you too. Um, let me go back to this because you made a great point about deciding what kind of guy that you want to be and how you want to be seen. Right. Okay. 
here's the here's the thing I'm gonna I'm ask you this because um um myself now I mean I was like I was never no Lucario type of player player <laughs> but I was like a mini Lucario I was like uh I was like uh no, no Cario, not low I was like no no Cario <laughs> but it was like no no nigga no so I no I was no Cario right <laughs> and I, at one point and I, I talked about this before before I, and even the girl I got now. Mm-hmm. Um, she's been knowing me for ten years. Man. She right. used to work together. Mm-hmm. Um, I had three girls at the same time when I when she was my she was my, my best friend at the time. Right. Um, and I had three girlfriends. I mean, I was at I was not that dude that wanted to be in a committed relationship at that at that time. You know, I think most men though, what they struggle with is, are you going to be the type of dude that you that you want to be a player? Mm-hmm. Are you the kind of nigga that want to be in a relationship? Now you got some fake ass niggas. Let's talk about this. Some right. fake ass niggas be out there trying to sell the dream. Like right. I really want to be with you. Oh, I want to be in a relationship, and you have four bitches at the same time. I used to be that fake ass nigga. I used to do that shit all the time. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I have four bitches telling them all the same fucking thing. Right. You know, but right. I think it comes to the point where I mean, why are men not being honest with themselves? Cause a lot of dudes. Think they can do maybe what a Lucario can do, and I'm not saying you have like a bunch of women, I'm, but I'm pretty sure you probably, you know, you do your thing. I got, I got, I got my fair share. <laughs> you do your thing, but every brother can't do what you do, though, right? No, but they could though. That's the thing. See, this is the thing. Every see, it, it's is really about like figuring out what you want and and setting up your situation how you want it. You understand? Because, um, you know. Certain guys do, you know, want girlfriends. Some guys are like, you know, they're not trying to be with a whole bunch of girls. Some guys just want a, a, a good girl, a nice girl they're going to be with, and everything's going to be cool. Some guys uh, want to, you know, date multiple women. Some guys just want to hook up with a whole bunch of girls. So it's specifically what you're trying to do. You have to become that person, or you have to be that, that side of you has to come out. And there's a certain way that you do that when you're interacting with women that is going to be, um, you know, honest with, you know, you and also the woman you're dealing with. Right. See, the thing is, women are attracted to base. They're basically attracted to honesty. So it's about you saying, look, this is what it is and this is what I'm about. So either you in or you out, you understand? And, and, and that's what it is. So the thing that that gets, uh, you know, things tricky or it makes a lot of drama happen and all the, a whole bunch of the nonsense is knowing what you want and then coming at a girl and saying hey let's do this let's do that but you don't really know what you're about and then you present something to her and then all of a sudden there's something else later then it, it, it gets kind of crazy but if you say hey look this is what i want this is what i'm about and this is what i'm here to do and then she goes along with that then everything basically runs smoothly you know in most cases so it's not about necessarily like you know a, a guy can't do this or can't do that it's it's literally about okay are you willing to become that guy And are you willing to do what you need to do in order to make these things happen based off of what you want? You understand? So if you want a girlfriend, are you willing to do the things correctly that it takes to actually create a situation where you get a girlfriend? If you want to just have a lot of sex, are you going to do the things correctly that's going to create the situation where you have a lot of sex? You see what I mean? And so, the you know, unfortunately, a lot of guys might not know exactly like what to do to make it happen a little smoother. You understand? So which is why a lot of mistakes happen and, you know, or they think they can't make it happen. But if you understand what you want and, and what you want to do, you go about it and then you can actually create it and make it happen. So it's really all about you first figuring out what you want. Like for me, for example, I'm in an um, open relationship and this is something that, you know, I realized that I wanted. So I said, OK, if I'm, you know, with someone that we got to be open and the, the other women that I'm dealing with need to know that, you know, I'm with somebody and that, um, you know, I'm not I'm not monogamous. You understand? So understanding that about me, I said, OK, what can I do to make this happen? And so basically I was honest with these women and, you know, I get women that are cool with that. Some women are like, oh, I can't fuck with that. You understand? And that's cool, because at least now. You know, they know, okay, this guy isn't the the type of guy I'm going to deal with. But the women who are okay with it, they're like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, what I want. And it's more of a cooperative situation because I first, you know, uh, stepped to them and said, this is what it is. And then they followed that program. And then this is how it, you know, goes from there. So it's all about you creating that situation first and then making it happen later. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. So, um, no, very good point. Because a lot of dudes, they don't think that they can do that. They don't right. think that they, you know, 
just keep it real. Like I used to be on some fake ass shit. I am not gonna lie. I used to be kind of nigga. You know, bro, I'm just gonna be you know, my life. Keeping it real. This, this is the part that people understand. Sometimes keeping it real is hard on the front end, but it's easier on the back end, right? Lying is easy on the front end, but hard on the back end. So you can, when you keep it real and you say, okay, this is what it's about, right? So let's say you're trying to say to a girl, like, look, I'm just trying to fuck this all I'm trying to do, right? You're going to have a few, you know, a, a lot of women who will be like, oh, I'm not really down for that, right? But then if you say, hey, I just want to fucking do all of that, you're going to have those, you know, few women that are going to be down for it like that. You understand? So you're getting what you want at the end of the day, but you, you had to, you know, you know, go through this to actually get it. You understand? Versus... If you lie, yeah, you can lie and say this and say that, and then you know, uh, pretend to be this and pretend to be that, and then a girl will be down for it, you know, for that moment. And then, you know, after she re finds out that you're lying, then it might be an issue later because she was being deceived. And that's the thing that that you know makes it, um, uh, you know, you get into like a lot of situations where it's a lot of drama because of the deception. You understand what I'm saying? And so that makes it harder for you in the in the long term. And then also when you are always lying it, it's it's easy to keep lying because you know you start to see a lot of things on the front end go your way with the lie to say anything and do anything to pretend to be you know whatever but the thing is when you're honest and you say hey this is what i'm about this is what i want what you're doing is that you're drawing people in who actually want that and you're basically uh repelling people away that don't want those things which is both good things so you don't have to worry about the women who aren't going to be down with it because then you don't got to have to deal with that. You ain't got to pretend and then make up something later and all the other stuff. So now if you're being honest and authentic, then those women who actually are for you with about, you know, for, you know, what you want, then it's going to be easier to deal with them because now you're getting exactly what you want without going through all the fluff and you're dealing with women who are on the same page as you. And it's a, just a little, it's just a, a very um, more enjoyable, like experience than having to always be watching your back or thinking, oh, is she going to think this or is she going to think that? Do I need to hide this from her? Do I need, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a, a way more enjoyable experience at the end of the day when you start out with the honesty so that, you know, later on that when you're doing what you're doing, things start to fall into place a little bit more smoother, you know? So, so that's what really I'm what we're dealing with is a lot of times that women use men is because men are being dishonest with themselves first so they put out their aura to be on some fake shit, mm -hmm. and right. then females take mm -hmm. it. So really, it's their fault. Yeah, in, in a way, in a way, in a way. And the thing is, too, you have to understand that. Um, and I was talking about this on my on my live show the other day. Is that it's in a woman's nature to manipulate. You understand? And and we all sort of manipulate to an extent, but for women especially, um, when they're dealing with the man, her to sort of get what she wants. You know she has to sort of manipulate in a certain way and now when i say manipulation i was saying that you know it's not necessarily a bad thing and you know uh my dude miles cunningham he was on the line he was talking about you know there's a difference because you have a woman who can manipulate you to sort of take from you and it, it's not benefiting you at all but then you have a woman who can manipulate you basically into greatness meaning that she sees something in you and then she you know uh, joins your team, she follows your program to assist and help you to get from point A to point B. You see what I mean? So a lot of times, like um, these guys, like you were saying, you know, these women end up, you know, uh, using the guys and doing all the other stuff because what they see is, is that when they're interacting with a certain guy, if they catch him lying or they see that he's bullshitting or he, they see that he's doing this and doing that, at that point, they're like, okay, either I, I'm not going to mess with him anymore or I'm going to just try to take whatever I can get from this dude because, you know, he's he they look at him as sort of like weak, like he couldn't just be a man and be honest. You see what I'm saying? But when they see a man and he's honest, they're like, OK, I see that he's he's a little bit more trustworthy because he's you know, he's being honest when he could have just lied. So, you know, when I get with him, I could be on some stuff where I just sort of like take from him or I could get with his program because he's basically the type of guy I could see myself, you know, working with and being with and doing things with to build because I see that he has integrity. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, the way that a woman's going to respond to you uh, correlates with how you're uh, presenting yourself in the situation. You see what I mean? So then they act accordingly based off of how you're, you're coming at them. You see okay. what I mean? Okay. Sweet. Crazy. Got it. Got it.
Um, I, I'm gonna ask a, a, another another question here. What I want to do is um, take a little a, a little intermission, brothers. We have an awesome show, an awesome guest tonight, um, and I want to get back to that point about how when you lie, how she'll flip the strips. I got a story about that. Um, so, brothers, do me a favor. We have uh, 78 people, okay, that have liked the video, but I have 138 watching, okay? I need 21 more people to go and like this particular uh, stream that we're doing right now. So if you're just coming into the stream, okay, and the reason why we ask you to do that um, is because YouTube, uh, what they do is they promote uh, this particular stream so that we can get more brothers help. We can promote Lucario or what he does, okay? And you can also promote this uh, this channel. So if you're a brother out there, uh, and thank you for the likes, keep liking the video, brothers. Because what this does, it just promotes this channel. It gets us to get more brothers, helps us to get more people in the ranking. So like I said, when you like the video, that's why we ask you to do it. All right? It is just to, to, to further the channel to get more people uh, to be able to reach a, 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 a wider audience. So thank you, brothers, for liking. Let me get nine more people to like it if you're just coming into the stream or if you haven't liked it. Thank you. So we have eight more left. And while you are liking that, uh, I just want to uh, go ahead again and thank Lucario while he's on the stream with us. Like I said, the brother could be doing something else. Um, what I want you guys to do is for those who want to subscribe to his channel, you can do one or two things. You can go directly into the description link. Okay, and, and find out his channel. He has over 8,000 subscribers. He's been growing very rapidly. All right, and when I get back on my main channel, which is 37,000 subscribers, we're going to kick that off with Lucario. Um, and then what we also want to do is for you brothers that are actually inside of the, uh, the chat box, go ahead and click on his, uh, his channel, subscribe to him, put sub. So Zach Brown, I've been seeing him in here the whole night. Finity Gaming, what's up to you? Uh, Hogan's channel, what's up to you? All you guys, go ahead and subscribe to him and then click sub. So we got 100 cookies watching. Thank you. 97 likes. Three more, brothers. Give me up to 100. Um, let, me, let me talk to you about this because a lot of brothers, um, for example, they'll be married or something, right? Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, you nigga know he married, right? <laughs> you nigga know he married. Right. You no, know, and uh, he doing all this shit like he don't come, you know, he never comes over at a certain time to see the other girl. You know, she don't know. You know what I'm saying? He might be dishing out big money on the side and shit. Right. Then fuck around, you know, she find out that, uh, oh, you married, right? Right. Okay. Now, instead of just stop fucking with you, you know, she'll go, she, her revenge now is you're going to cash me out. You know what I mean? Right. This type of thing happens too. I mean, like this will happen a lot of brothers when they start lying and shit. A lot of women are are cool, are, are shady enough where they will actually stay in the relationship with you and will still fuck you and have sex with you, but they're gonna take you for everything you are trying to take you for everything you got. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and that's what I'm saying, and that's exactly that's exactly what I was saying earlier is that you know, he sees that you know you're the type of dude who is. You know, not being authentic, you understand, or lying and all that. And that's why I say lying is harder on the on the back end because once they find out, then it's like, oh shit, okay, well now all the respect is gone. You know, she ain't respecting you. She don't care. She's just trying to get whatever she could get. You know, um, you know, she'll try to use you for all your money, take all this, take all that. And then so now, and the thing is, you won't even even know sometimes that she knows. You understand? Like she's not going to tell you sometimes, but she knows what's going on. So, Dave. You know, it's it's a little bit more beneficial for you at the end of the day to just be straight up. Because if you if you would have said, "Listen, you know, I got a I got a wife. Um, this is what it is, and and you know, it is what it is." And even I would even go even as far as to say you should tell your wife also, like, "Let's look. I know we married, but I'm gonna want to be messing with other chicks." You know, however you want to <laughs> that way. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, you getting caught and you you know being in that situation is not going to uh help you in the long run and, and the thing i say you know as far as like letting these women know from the jump this is why i sort of like you sort of got to know what you're about and where you're at at all times meaning like if you're dealing with uh like if you met your wife and when you met your wife you should have known and said hey listen um i'm I, i'm i'm feeling you but i'm still i still might want to around with other people you understand and if she's not down with that then she shouldn't be your wife if 
you are that type of guy who wants to do that and knows you want to do that. Now, let's say you got married and you were on some monogamous stuff and everything was cool, but all of a sudden you feeling different. You're going to have to have that sort of conversation before you, uh, you know, make any of those moves. Now, it's, e it's easier said than done. You understand what I'm saying? But the thing is, you have to, you know, play the long game, meaning that you don't want to drag something out or you don't want anything to go like, you know, crazy. And then, you know, the consequences of all that, you know, your actions after all of that is just dropping the headache you don't really want to have to deal with. You see what I'm saying? So, and the thing is, you got to understand, like, when, when women are, you know, when women have been deceived <laughs> or they're, you know, they get all up in their emotions and all of that other stuff, some, sometimes it's, you know, you're not, it's so unpredictable that you don't even want to, you don't even want to get into that, that zone or that category of even seeing what, what could happen. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying, look, at least have everybody on the same page. So, you know, if anything, you know, goes down or if it's a lot of drama or whatever, it's something based off of what you already set as the foundation with, you know, with the honesty, you understand what I'm saying? So it's not any surprises. It's not like she didn't know this or she didn't know that. You understand what I'm saying? So at least, you know, it's something that it's a ground you guys to stand on where you could communicate and make things better. It's hard to try to make shit work or make shit better, things better if, you know, your wife finds out that she was fucking with some other woman or this other woman you have finds out you got a wife. It's just, it's just a big ass headache. So, you know, to save yourself from that trouble, just start from the jump, you know, being honest with what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's crazy. Okay. Know? I definitely right. agree. Let me do this real quick. Let me give a shout out to my man, Big East Ward 302, man. He always support, man. Thank you for the uh, $20 super chat, bro. You always been supporting on the videos and comments. I really thank you, man, uh, you know, for just what you do as a subscriber. Um, but he's one of our, our Patreons, too. And he always comments on all the videos, man. He's a real supporter, brother. Uh, also, man, I got the dual threat. Uh, uh, he plays offense and defense like uh, Deion Sanders. That means he writes great articles, and now he produces classic podcasts. The one and only senior writer at the Negro Manosphere, author Alan Roger Curry at Mold One Light Skin Productions. Light Skin Productions. Shout out to Alan Roger Curry. That's the dude right there, man. That's <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Young Guru Fitness. He said, oh, shit, you ugly as fuck, but you speak that real shit. I mean, nigga, like you. Hold on. Let me do it this real quick, Macario. Let me do it this real quick. You don't mind, do you? Go ahead. Let me, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Let me, let me just deal with you. Let me just deal with you. First of all, you come in here with a motherfucking pink lavender shirt on, nigga. I don't know if you like uh, uh, Spider-Man, Pink Booty Crip Man, what, whoever you are, nigga. You, you act like you telling me something I don't know. Oh, shit, you ugly as fuck. Nigga, I, my mama knew that when I was an embryo in 1980. I'm, I was born in 81. You niggas got to work on your fucking jokes, okay? Like, you, 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 you tell me something I don't know, nigga. Like, you know, motherfucking uh, the capital of uh, uh, Montana or something. Tell me something like that that I don't fucking know. The capital of the biggest, the, the tenth biggest city in Italy. Tell me, come in here and drop some shit that a nigga never heard before. You come in here telling me I'm ugly as fuck. That ain't, you ain't telling me that I don't know, nigga. You got to try again. You got to, you know what? You got to work on your rose game. You got to be like, you ugly as, you so ugly that your eyelids don't want to close because your ass, something, you know, your mirror breaks. Say something that's smart, nigga. Think about what the fuck you going to say before you come in and say, oh, shit, you ugly as fuck, but you speak that real shit. Like, that's the underhand. Come on, dog. That's that, that's that punk ass shit. Again. Mm. I, just, I mean, you niggas is weak. That's hilarious. Like, I know I'm the man, nigga. You ain't got to tell me that. I've been ugly all my life. You niggas got to come better. You got to come better, dog. You got to come better. You know what, dude? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Log out of your YouTube profile, okay? Give me the password. I'm going to roast me from your page. <laughs> That's going to be the best thing to do. All right? Because you, you email me, nigga. I'll give you some jokes to, to crack on me. You just <laughs> copy and paste them motherfuckers, and it'll be funny. Shout out to my man Edward Anderson for the two dollar super chat. Uh, Josh Josiah Johnson four dollar super chat. Uh, my boy Josiah, man, he got he got the uh, the Moses Malone glasses on. Player, I see you. I ain't seen them since the nineteen eighty four season, dog. Okay. Um, let me let me go ahead and back to uh, brother Lacaria, man. Um, so let me let me let me ask you this, man. Um.
we think that I know I did. I thought the only kind of bitches that used men were really attractive women, right? Mm. But the game has changed. Fat mm. hoes using niggas too. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, no real talk. The game has changed, though. Like you know, back back in the day, and and here's the reason why I say that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most of my most of my uh, 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 fan base uh, is is black, right? And the reason mm-hmm. why niggas get used by the ugliest bitches and the fattest hoes is mm-hmm. because niggas will fuck anything. But it's different for like 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 over here in Poland and shit, right? Like I, I don't really see like chicks that are ugly, even if they thick, they could be like thick as fuck. Like over here, you know I'm in Poland, right? Right, right, right. Okay, like over here, if you see a white girl with like a super fat ass, and I see it like all the time, right? But if she don't look a certain way in the face, these dudes will walk right past her like she ain't shit. Like, right. I'm sitting there like, you don't see what I see? Do you see? But if she like in the hood, niggas gonna be on it, right? Of course, of course. But over over here, these dudes like they got that certain type of look they're looking for. You know, you got to be all the way fine. You just can't have a banging body like that, and niggas gonna be on you. But in contrast, niggas get used by a bunch of fat, musty looking bitches for the mm-hmm. simple fact that black men will fuck anything. Right, right. Uh, anything. Any these niggas will fuck. Any, I mean, if you go to xvideos.com, not I, I've never been there. I've just been told this. Like I don't be on the horse. You know, I'm Baptist, right? You feel me? <laughs> yeah. I'm Christian. If you look at the holes that these niggas will fuck. And then upload it to the fucking internet. Right. <laughs> you you will see how how thirsty black men is. So mm-hmm. like what you get in the city said this is a bunch of like bitches who nickel and dime, right. and a lot of fat bitches is getting a whole bunch of Metro PCS bills paid. Mm-hmm. They're getting a whole bunch of free Popeye's chicken. Right. Right. And um. And a whole lot of niggas babysitting kids for free. Cause like we we think that that only women who are using men are good looking women. But let's talk about these ugly hoes got a market for using niggas too. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Well that's see the thing though is that you know a lot of these guys out here, they they pay attention to anything. You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, you know, one one it is it, because of ego, meaning like guys generally just like to be able to have sex like okay I, you know i smashed this girl i smashed that girl i got this girl, you know what i mean it was kind of like okay you know I'm, I'm i'm just getting some some play i'm getting some ass so it don't really matter you know they say you know pussy is pussy whatever that's like the, the you know thing but also um it comes from too you know low self-esteem in certain situations where a guy feels like you know that's all he can get he can only get a certain type of woman because you know generally the the, the woman that you choose really is a reflection of you you understand what i'm saying and the thing is is that if you're if you're continuously choosing you know these goofy ass like sloppy type of kid it basically says something about you you know what i'm saying and and i'm not gonna sit here and and, and act like i'm i'm you know holier than thou because i've been there's some girls that i smashed back in the day that dude if you've seen them man i i have to run in and in, in hide in shame dude i mean it's it's terrible it's terrible okay like these are the type of chicks you you go over their house and you can't be walking on the street with them. Because you you ever seen that movie Ra- Raising Victor Vargas? Uh, no, no, I've never seen it. So in the movie, the dude, this is this, this this guy, he's fucking with this goofy ass fat girl, and he's he's just banging her, getting it in, but he don't want nobody to know that he's fucking with her. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's like those guys do that type of shit. And so what happens is that those women start to be able to get these dudes to do shit for them. They'd be like, okay, well, you know, give me some paper, you know, pay my phone bill, do this and do that. Because a lot of guys are stuck in that, that realm of just dealing with those type of women or feeling like those are the only type of women that they can get. And then they're interacting with those women. Cause like I was saying earlier, you know, it's, it's a reflection of, you know, your, yourself. And if you are dealing with a woman who, you know, is like that, or you don't even think is that hot, or you're not really that attracted to her, but you're really you're just fucking with her because she's there. It's basically saying to you, you're saying to yourself at that moment when you're dealing with her, it's like, hey, you know, I don't feel like I can do any better than this. 
you know, I might be desperate. I might just, you know, I might be bored and I don't really want to put in any work to get anything better. You know what I mean? Like you're just doing that at that moment because you're, you're, you're trying to make anything happen. And then now when you do that, you gas these girls heads up and then they think that they can, you know, uh, uh, get all these things. And then what happens is they end up getting it because a lot of these guys out here, they're giving them so much attention. You understand that they get all gassed up and then they even make it harder to get, you know, those, you know, goofy chicks make it harder uh, for guys to get with them. And now it's like every girl is hard to make shit happen with. You feel what I'm saying? So now even the average to below average looking women are, you know, getting some shit popping in the game like that. You know I mean? So it's really about the guys, uh, you know, uh, going toward those women and entertaining those women so that these women feel that they can do these things and these guys are actually giving them money gifts and using them for attention and all that other crazy shit like it's you know it goes around in a cycle man you know what I mean? so it's crazy uh, let me let me uh i got a confession to make man because i don't want you just to be out here talking about all the ugly hoes you fuck right <laughs> yeah, you out here by yourself <laughs> okay back in my thirsty days man um right you you know like I'm I'm gonna tell you like this right now you know I I said I've been ugly all my life right this is true you know we you know, everybody know this um the only person that told me I was cute was my grandma because back then when I had a hairline she said I was the second coming of uh, Dr Martin Luther King which is a goddamn <laughs> lie I don't know what the fuck she saw about that but um listen y'all see now I'm I'm like um ugly and semi broke right. Back then, I was ugly and I was broke. <laughs> so if I got some coochie back then, I mean, you know, I, you ever see like a pit bull when he locks on a dog? Yeah. Right. Let that shit go until he kill it. Right. All right. Uh, um, there's a few times, and it's funny. I see this chick when I was back home. She's fine now, though. Like, right. I, but I, she, but um, so she came to the house, man, and she's, you know, let's, you know, let me hit that. Mm. No, no, let me hit that. No, no, no. Took the drawers off, boy. Woo! Woo! <laughs> no, I got a big nose. That shit's strong. Right into my damn nostrils, nigga. That shit was faking. Okay? Uh, listen, now, I know some of y'all didn't did this. Press one. Don't lie either. Y'all, we all been there. It was thanking, but you worked so hard to get it off. All right. You still hit it anyway. Mm -hmm. you, you did this. <laughs> or how many of y'all used to go in the, in the bathroom and, and sniff uh, alcohol so that way it would, it would, it would, it would uh, you, you know, your, your nose wouldn't smell it? Or hydrogen peroxide. I know I ain't the only nigga that did it. So I don't know why I did it. I did it. One, okay, one. All right, listen. Some of y'all niggas gonna stop lying. You, it was thinking you still hit it anyway because you worked that hard to get it. I ain't the only one that did it. Right, listen, nigga, listen, I was struggling, nigga, okay? Right. <laughs> if you don't like it, unsubscribe. That's what I used to do. I mean, <laughs> now I've been there too, man. I've I've had times, man, where you know the drawers come off and smelling like hot garbage and shit, you know. And it's just like you're like, God damn it. And the thing is, I remember one time though. Oh man, this is terrible. This chick came to my crib and it stunk up the whole house. I was like, God damn, like how the fuck did that happen? Like. I was like, I was like, and so, the, and the thing is this, you know, every once in a blue moon, I think every guy has had a point where he's done something like that, meaning he was with some chick like that, or he got with a chick who he know is just like, you know, whack. He's not really feeling it like that. He don't think she's hot. But if you continuously do that, if that's like your, you know what I'm saying, your thing, then that's, that's some, something going on. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's something going on with that. So. You know, you gotta you gotta check what you're doing. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, it's crazy, bro. Cause now if it's if it yeah, cause see, it's okay for me to be thinking. It ain't okay for you to be thinking. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't walk around feeling like shit. Like, I don't like, matter, but you can't. The girl can't think. Right. I can be. I can smell like a motherfucking shit ball. It don't matter to me. And I'm, like, Yo, she, I'm like, she don't smell that shit. I'm like, how you don't smell that? <laughs> like, how you don't smell that? Like. You gotta be smelling that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, look, is this what you niggas used to do? I'm gonna tell you, niggas. Okay, this is what y'all used to do, right? Girl, come over here, thinking of your house. First thing you do, hey baby, let's get in the shower together. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to bathe that bitch in the shower, nigga? That's trying to be sexy. Like, yeah, girl, I just want to just, you know. <laughs> what? Maybe I just want to, you know. It'd be just real sexy if I could just, you know, you know, wash you off and you wash me. Oh, that, oh that's so sweet. You'd be in there like, God damn. Now, you ever, did you ever have a girl who her joint was terrible and then she actually asked you to, like, go down on her? Oh, um, I, I had that one yet. So you know, I, I feel like we need to take this slow. I don't <laughs> 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 You know, I mean, it'd be bitches, it'd be bitches that'll get in the shower, come out the shower, pussy still be stinking. And just oh. some of them, that shit is congenital, nigga. Oh, well, you know, it's just like, oh, it's terrible. It's a sad, sad thing that's a witness. And it's a oh, my God. But some of y'all, that's all y'all got me, you know what I mean? But like, 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 like look, you look, y'all. What we saying is, um, got to be game up, bro, okay? Like, you know, I ain't the, uh, I, I, I ain't the best. <laughs> my girl crazy. She in here listening to the other room. She just messaged me on Facebook talking about LMA. <laughs> oh man. But listen, mate, you know, you 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 gotta keep elevating, right? That's why, you know, we bring people like Lucario, uh, you know, Master Alan Roger Curry, who writes on the Negro Manosphere and comes on a podcast. Speaking of Alan Roger Curry, um, we have the official Alan Roger Curry block party. Oh word. Okay. Uh, next week, yeah, we're trying to sell some Ellen Roger Curry books, all right? And um, this is something that we typically do uh, for a release, something like that. We could also do the same. If you ever got something released, man, just let me know. You know, we, you know, brothers, we brothers do support on this channel, so we're gonna have the the Alan Roger Curry blog party. We're gonna try to do it for about three or four hours. It's gonna be a bunch of shit talking and um, a lot of brothers networking on that particular show. If you if you you know feel that you want to stop in. Uh, Lucario, I definitely would love to have you on here, man. Introduce you to some of the other network of the brothers that we got going on right now. So, um, you guys be on the lookout for that. And um, let's do this, man. Let's let's all do me a favor. Uh, subscribe to Lucario right here, okay? We have 138 watching right now. Yeah, man. I um, appreciate the subscriber, man. Let's make it happen. Yeah, let's do that, man. Let's let's get uh, tight end TV. Shout out to you, bro. Shy Five, I see you. Chu Jovastaka Ozamo Ozamos, you live in Zamos. That's not too far from you know. That's not too far from me actually. Yeah, Zamos is like real, real close to Lublin. Yeah, where I live. So shout out to you. Don't come try to shoot a nigga or nothing, you know. <laughs> but um, so you guys, let's go ahead and, and subscribe to Lucario, man. He did a real good job coming over to the thing. And for the other brothers that are in the chat, um, we got 137 watching right now, 119 people. Let's like the video. All right? Get get the likes up. Uh, this nigga said, O'Shea is Val Remote baby dipped in charcoal. Oh, that's that nigga with the, with, with the Michael Cage goggles on. He donated some money, so I'm going to leave him alone. You can go ahead and roast me, play. You get you donated the Super Chat. You bought your roast, nigga! Uh... So donate the like. And also, man, for you brothers out there, let me do this real quick, man, before we go back to Lucario. Um, shout out to everybody that's been donating. I mean, I signed up for the Negro Manus for Patreon. 128 Patreons, man, in like 10 days. All right? That's the power of you brothers, man. Really, I appreciate all the brothers that stepped up to want to see the Negro Manus for uh, website, which is doing excellent. Um, this actual uh, Patreon that we have is what pays Alan Roger Curry to write for us. It pays Obsidian to write for us. It pays Ron Wills to write for us. So um, this is a whole community effort trying to give black men a voice. And then we have brothers like Lucario comes on here. Uh, we chop up game with him. So the more uh, you brothers sign up on the Patreon for the Negro Manosphere, the more we can do things like this. Tomorrow I'm supposed to have an interview uh, with MGTOW101. Uh, the Australian YouTuber with over 72,000 subscribers, so that's going to be good. So, like I said, the more the more the brothers donate, is the more you know uh, on the Patreon. And sign up for just five bucks a month, um, and I got a Patreon coming out, a video coming out for you subscribers. The more you guys go on Patreon, it helps support us. You're supporting a good thing. It's not like you're giving like five bucks for me to go get some weave like some other you know female uh, writers do. You know what I'm saying? No, I ain't gonna hate. 
Cynthia G. But you know what I'm talking about. You, you're actually supporting black male media. In black male media, we need to have our own voice. Your brothers like Macario, you know, let's be honest. They don't want this kind of game getting out there. You know what I'm saying? No. They don't want this kind of game getting out there. But if you brothers put, you know, keep stepping up with the money like you've been doing, um, we can build these type of, you know, type of things. And we can have brothers with expertise come in and give you this game and give you the media that you guys want. All right? So that's what we try to do. Um, and you brothers have really stepped up to, 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 to the plate. So if you're not signed up on Patreon, um, you know, where that's Path uh, to Info, Gone Postal, Siobhan, Titan TV, Speed Coffee, I'm calling your name, Pritchard of Brotherhood, uh, you know, Between the Lines, Red Star, go ahead uh, and sign up on Patreon, man. We need your help. We need your support. Uh, you can pledge as little as five bucks a month, and we can keep this thing going. And also, we can bring on more special guests and more people and, 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 and write more articles for y'all, okay? Um, Lucario, is there anything else you want to talk about tonight, man, um, on this particular stream? Uh, just real quick, I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody goes to MrLocario.com to get the book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. The book is crazy. You get the hard copy or the ebook copy. You can go to MrLocario.com right now to get that, or make sure you also go to badboymembership.com so you can join my membership because I give you 45 through 90 minute audio and video dating advice tutorials every month. So when you go to badboymembership.com and join, you're going to get every month, you're going to get a new audio slash video that teaches you detailed step-by-step -step advice on how to, you know, step up your game. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely uh, hit me up there. You feel me? Okay. Okay. Cool. And you, um, you worked with uh, a lot of big people, man. You worked with uh, Curry. Uh, you worked with Tariq Nasheed too, right? All right. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of my advertisements on Tariq Nasheed joint. So every time you hear his, uh, his podcast, you hear some of my, my, my joints on there. So, you know, that's been a, a dope look for, to be on that joint. You know what I mean? So Tariq Nasheed's a cool ass dude, man. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, you can always, man, whatever you need me to do, you know, just let me know, man. Uh, you have a lot of good information. We need more brothers uh, putting out the game. It's a lot of black men, you know. Everybody's not a a, a mouthpiece talker. You know, a lot of a lot of men do um, uh, struggle uh, with with seeing certain things in women, seeing certain red flags. So right. you know, brothers, we we have the professional people like Lucario, like the Currys. We have them to produce the type of stuff that you want to hear, right? And so we just need you brothers to keep, you know, tuning in. Tell people about, you know, Lucario's channel. You know what I'm saying? He got good stuff. That's another way of supporting. You know, you ain't always got to have um, – oh, okay, thank you, Gone Postal. Um, you know, you don't have to have, you know, necessarily if you can't, you know, you know the money. But you can't tell somebody about, about these brothers out here, man, uh, the work we're doing mm -hmm. on, on, uh, on YouTube, especially for Lucario fans. He has over 1,000 videos. And those are free videos, man. He put his money up into, you know, uh, you know, getting equipment, creating content just for you to enjoy. So, like I said, you know, we have content for you to enjoy. And Lucario, man, when 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 can you come back, playoff? Oh yeah, let me know whenever you're ready. We can do this again. We can make it happen. I'm I'm always down. So just holler at me. Let me know what's what's good for you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So um, I I know that um, we're gonna do so because like next week. Um, definitely, we're going to do the blog party for Alan Roger Curry. So then probably if you want to stop by on that particular day, i definitely like you to stop by. And then the week after that, I'll have another slot. So we could do a whole, just another interview like this. That's two weeks. And then, but if you want a fellowship and get some connections with the other brothers out there and possibly link up with them, we definitely could do that. So, um, again, Lucario fan, L-O-C-A-R-I-O-F-A-N. Go subscribe. Don't, don't wait. Don't tarry. Go subscribe right now. And again, thank you for all the brothers, man, who have been out here uh, supporting uh, my, my man Guzman, Speed Coffee, Rob Mark. I see you. Char Willie, I see you. All right, so this is going to conclude the interview. Thank you guys for what you do. Thank you too, Lucario. Man, I hit you on Facebook, and then I'll send you this actual stream also when it uploads. And it's me. I'll post it up on my YouTube and all that. You feel me? Okay. Peace out, man. All right, man. Be safe.